I just had like the craziest, saddest thought. Um, I'm in the stage of life where I'm watching all my friends get married and have babies and find love. And I had another talking phase yet again fall through. And my friend was like, you know, you'll meet the one one day. Don't give up. But now I'm at a point where I hope I don't because what happens if I meet him and he wants kids and I'm too old to not be able to give him any? So it's easier for me to say I don't want kids. I'm having like a weird existential crisis. I don't know why I'm posting this on TikTok, but I think I just, I need to know I'm not alone. All right, Shalom. This is your brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, and it reads, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. All right, and obviously through the Spirit, this lesson is based on a clip that you just saw of this woman who's above 30, you know, uh, explaining her, her situation, you know, and trying to find a mate long term, you know, to uh, start a family. You know, and uh, through the spirit, I want to start off with Jeremiah, the sixth chapter, because it highlights, you know, basically what the Lord told us, you know, uh, at Mount Sinai, which is that being left to our own devices, being left to our own counsel, we would destroy ourselves. And the society that we exist in, what we call black culture is really destructive in nature. You know, I, I mean, for all of us as a nation of people, but uh, the women really do suffer on this one as well. All right, because they're led by the lust of their flesh and what they're told. And in the end, all right, they understand that it's too late for a lot of them. All right, and this woman is an example. You know, um, she basically expressed that she was getting to the age where she's, she understands that she's a little too old to have children or she will be by the time she finds someone to take serious. And because of that, she states that she doesn't even, she tells people she, don't, she doesn't even want children because she understands she's so old. All right. That um, it may be a, a rough pregnancy or unsuccessful pregnancy. And this is why in the ancient world, you know, we as a people marry young, though it may offend many. All right. This is why marriages were arranged. All right. This is why the fathers, both the father of the groom and the father of the bride arranged marriages. To prevent situations like this, because ultimately all right. Marriages are not about happiness. It's about nation building and business, if you can understand that. But Esau, being the cunning hunter that he is, he's given us a doctrine where most of our people are chasing individual happiness over what is well and good for us as a nation of people. All right. And you can obviously see that no, no amount of money or um, nights out and clubs and all of these things that the women of our nation enjoy in their youth matters to her now that she's at a point where she understands that family is what's ultimately going to make her happy. Having a man on a long term basis is ultimately what's going to make her happy. And this is why the scriptures say this. All right. This is first Timothy chapter five and verse six. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. All right. And this it's easy to overlook this, especially for the women of our nation when they're young. All right. Because they believe that the whole world, you know, is going to remain this beneficial to them forever. But as they start to get in their late 20s, they start to realize that, you know, the offers, the dates, the um, the conversations begin to change. The attention begins to change very drastically. And this is why in the ancient world. All right. Marriages were arranged early. All right. So that a woman had 
more than enough time during her age of fertility to have children, to give forth children. Because ultimately, that's what the happiness of a woman boils down to. And you have a lot of guys in the red pill community that talk about these things. But really, this goes back to the scriptures. You know, people look at what the Lord told us about the old path and the heritage that he gave us. And Esau has taught our people to look at it in a negative light. But it's really a positive light in the long term. But on this side of life, we're taught to think on a short term basis, personally and as a nation of people. And in both cases, we suffer long term. Real quick, this is Deuteronomy 32 and 20. All right. Matter of fact, let's start at 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. All right. And that trust and that lack of trust and that lack of counsel has brought us to the situation that we're in now. Where you have this dating culture, which is really just domestic prostitution. You know, you have women that, you know, utilize their youth and their looks and their body while they can. And then when they get to a point where they're not as desirable, you know, they start to say that they don't have time for games and all of these different things. But really, you know, on a cycle of fertility, you know, they've utilized the years that they should have built a, a strong family in folly. And it doesn't benefit them and it doesn't benefit the nation. All right. And I wanted to use this video as a highlight to why the Lord told us to do certain things, why the Lord gave us this counsel and why uh, we were supposed to do this as a nation of people. Because the law, statutes and commandments are conducive to us being built up as a nation. Whereas on this side of life, we're taught to chase our own individual pleasure on a short term. And most of us suffer on it, uh, suffer for it long term. And women, uh, most importantly, uh, concerning this lesson, because, again, a man can have seed. He can give seed all the way into his deathbed almost. Whereas a woman, she has a small point in time where she can actually give children and strong children. Because a lot of the strength of a child is based on the, the youth of the womb. If you can understand that, if you can receive it. And all of this, this is why the Lord designed the law, statutes, and commandments in the way that they were designed. Because a lot of times, us as a people on this side of life, we think short term. We don't think long term. We don't think multi-generational. We only think in one generation. And then on top of that, we only think about our personal well-being. And none of that is uh, conducive to building up a nation of people. And this is why the Lord said that he would leave us to our own counsel. And this is what our own counsel has gotten us. Destruction. All right. Matter of fact, since I'm in Deuteronomy, this is Deuteronomy 31 and 17. And it reads, then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day. And I will forsake them and I will hide my face from them and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them so that they will say in that day, are not these evils come upon us? Because our power is not among us. All right. Because we've forsaken the counsel of the Heavenly Father, we've been we've been destroyed for a lack of knowledge. How we should conduct ourselves as a nation of people, how marriages should be sustained. All right. The relationship between men and women of our nation, how that's supposed to be uh, facilitated. We've forsaken that way. And because of that, we have this culture that we call culture, which is really just destructive. And then you end up having individuals like this woman who, as much as she cries, she can't change her age. She can't change the fact that the certain things that she should have been focused on, she wasn't focused on because of the pleasures of this world. And you can tell by her looks and, and what have you that she probably could have had a man a long time ago. She, caught up, she probably could have been married a long time ago. All right. But she passed that up for the grass being green on the other side or the possibility and now she's at a point where she's running out of time and the idea of her finding something that she's looking for in this world is going to be next to impossible. And in order to avoid all of that, the Lord gave us the law, statutes and commandments. This was supposed to be our wisdom in the sight of the nations. 
that you have a lot of our people who look at the law, statutes and commandments as if they're outdated. But look at the results of the modern world that we live in today and how it affects our people. All right. Real quick. This is Deuteronomy four and five. It says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord, my power commanded me that ye should do so in the land where ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath a power so nigh unto them as the Lord our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? And even now you have our people who make mockery of um, the age of marriage, the age of of the marriages in the ancient world and, and how it was beneficial to the nation. They make mockery of these things, but really those things being implemented will benefit us as a nation of people. Because a lot of times you have examples like this woman, all right, where, you know, men, uh, women already out number men all right and then you count the the lgbtq of the men of our nation the ones who are incarcerated you know it over it, it's overwhelming that the women outnumber the men all right but this is why you know the lord gave us this counsel that marriages were supposed to be handled in a certain way to preserve that woman so that when she's no longer old enough to uh, have children that are healthy she'll still be in a situation that is sustainable. But a woman like this, you know, now that she's older, she even may want kids. She may, more, she may want more than one kid and her body may not allow that to happen. And that's, that goes into the counsel of the Heavenly Father, man. All right, and this is why the Lord told us to do these uh, certain things and to conduct ourselves in a certain way, all right, to think long-term, not just your personal uh, benefits, your personal well-being, but the well-being of the nation and how you can be an asset to our people and not a liability. And this is why the council was given. All right. Matter of fact. I'm going to go to Titus on this one real quick. I'm going to just go to it. All right. So it's Titus chapter two and verse three. And it reads the aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And when you look at the older generation of women today, they they um, counsel women not a right. You know, they tell them to live their best life. And, and and when you look at those situations of a lot of the older women of our people who, you know, lived in pleasure, you know, a lot of times they live they live in their last years, in their older years, in their age years alone. All right. Desperately looking for a situation to settle down in. And they don't teach the women the right, even though they know that their experience led them to that position. They don't counsel the women to do something different. And this is an ongoing cycle. When you look at the music, whether it's the city girls, whether it's the rappers, all of these things that are being pushed on our people are not beneficial to our people as a whole. And this is why the Lord gave us the law, statutes and commandments, which should be a, a wisdom unto us. You know, all the time that a woman was uh, in her youth and she's able to have children and healthy children, she's utilizing her youth. All right. To go out on dates, to hit the club. And and by the time she gets to a point where she realizes she wants family, you know, her options are not the same. And when you look at it, a lot of times a woman doesn't pick the right person. And this is how you have these um, these situations. All right. Where you have these broken families. Because in the ancient world, the family was involved in arranging the marriage. The groom, his father, and the bride and his father. 
or the bride and her father, excuse me. And they would pick and they would negotiate and they would talk and the family would be involved in the marriage. Now you just have a hookup culture where everybody go downtown on Saturdays and Sundays and Friday nights and hook up. And if something happens to where they have a child, they have to kind of deal with the situation. But the family's not involved until um, until it's already permanent. And in the ancient world, it was backwards. It was reversed. And this is just one of many scenarios where us leaving from the heritage of our fathers has cost us dearly as a nation of people and as individuals. Because you could clearly see that the woman was upset about the idea of, you know, basically dying alone or not being able to start a family or, you know, and really through the spirit, the Lord gave us the law, statutes and commandments to prevent situations like that. A situation like that should be a a um, unique situation. But what we're finding is that it's becoming commonplace. Women who are in their early or late 30s without husbands who are now looking for husbands and they're no longer really as far as fertility, you know, they're no longer able to give forth um, multiple children. Because really, it's about nation building. That's what marriages are about. All right. That's why in uh, uh, Apocrypha, it says this. I'm going to just go straight to it. Yep. This is Ecclesiastes chapter seven. And I will start at. 23. All right. And this is a council. This is basically wisdom given to a father who has children. Ecclesiastes seven and 23 reads, has thou children instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth? Has thou daughters have a care of their body? And show not thyself cheerful toward them. Marry thy daughter, and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. But give her to a man of understanding. And this is why this is pushed. Why is this pushed? Because you don't want, in the ancient world, a woman who wasn't a virgin. You know, she was not something that a, a father would want to give his son. Just to be frank, just to be honest. It would be considered damaged goods. In the ancient world, this is how it was looked at. Because she's already known a man. And if you have a son, you will want your son to have a, a woman who hasn't known a man. And this is why the scriptures counsel those with daughters to have a care for their body. Make sure they're not in places where they could be taken advantage of. Because the woman's virginity was really one of her greatest gifts to her husband. On their, waiting, on their wedding night. And these are things that are not taught to us in, uh, in this modern world because, again, this world is not designed to benefit us as a nation of people. At best, it's designed to benefit the individual. And concerning women, it's, it's designed to allow them to have fun during the time where they should have a family. Verse uh, 26 reads, you know what? I'll just uh, stay at 25. It says, marry thy daughter and so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter because it's difficult. You know, uh, you watch your, your daughter grow up and, you know, you want the best for her. And because of that, you know, you want to put her in the best situation. And that's why the scriptures talk about giving her to a man of understanding. Because in the ancient world, a marriage was arranged and there was a dowry. There was a, a benefit to the woman being married to another family. All right, maybe the family had a certain level of success. But the scriptures talk about giving your daughter to a man of understanding because you could have a family that was successful, but the man that your daughter would marry was not a man of understanding. He, he may have been cruel or whatever the case may be. And once that woman's married, it's out of your hands. And that's why the scriptures describe it as a weighty matter. But I'm just using this as an example to go in depth on what this woman expressed is a is a 
result of the culture we've adopted here in Babylon under, under the captivity that we've been placed in. All right, when you look at the culture of city girls and all of these different things that are pushed on our people, you know, it's this, you gotta find a big ball or a rich man. And really that's a very, very small percentage of people. Um, contrary to social media, that's a very small percentage of the population in the United States. Black, white, yellow, whatever. It's a very small percentage. And this is a custom that's not pushed on other nations, all right? The so-called um, Arabs, when they come over here, their objective is not to find the richest individual. Their, their objective is to find a husband and start a family. Whatever income that man makes, they make the best of it and they try to raise a decent family. In the before we got into this modern feminist uh, system, all right, we had the same type of mindset. Your great granddaddy, your great great granddaddy, he may have worked at a factory or so, and he wasn't the richest, but they they did what they could to make the family survive, and they pushed forth um, to to establish a family and maintain it. Now you have a culture where the music is pushing unrealistic expectations. And then you have women like this who get up there in age and they realize that, you know, what they're looking for, they haven't found it. And now they're old. So that what they actually want doesn't want them. And this is why the fathers were in charge of arranging marriages. All right. I want to do something real quick. I want to go to this article that I pulled up. All right, and this is from DQYDJ, and it says income by race, average top 1%, median and inequalities. I'm going to go straight to the important ones. All right. So when we go to black, the average income, and this is household, is 48761 Median income is $35,002. With Hispanic or Latino, it's $42,164.09. And $30,000, set 30760 dollars Now, I just want to point this out because, again, this is the average. This is the median. You judge the quality of a nation on the average, on the median. All right, when you look at... Edomites, all right, or the so-called white man. It says seventy-one thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars and four cents is the average income. Fifty thousand one hundred six dollars is the median income. All right, and this is just setting the the, the precedence. So the one nation that really is 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 on the bottom of the barrel when it uh, when it concerns uh, income have been. Uh, consumed with music and television that tells you, tells the women of our nation um, that you got to marry a rich man, all right? And the men of our nation that you're not S-H-I-T unless you are a rich man. And on average, that's not the case for us as a nation of people. And this is how you have a woman like this who will complain about, um, you know, wanting to start a family in her late age, all right? Because she, again... Now she's gotten to that point where she may have believed these unrealistic expectations of the world. And now she's older and she realizes that the things that she wants more than likely don't want her. And she's either going to settle or she's going to have to die alone. And these are the this, this it's real. All right. What the Lord told us to do and how the Lord told us to conduct ourselves is a real situation. And you can see the consequences of not following the Heavenly Father. All right. I want to go back to this. All right. So I'm going to go back to uh, Jeremiah, the sixth chapter and the 16th verse. And again, it reads. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Because every situation that our people are suffering from, you can find a law, uh, a statute, or a judgment from Yahweh by Shemel Shai that could change, alter, and benefit us instead of destroying us. 
All right. The hookup culture doesn't benefit e anybody, even the women that enjoy themselves in their youth. When they get older, they, they suffer from the decisions that they've made in their youth. Whereas in the ancient world, their father would have gave them to a marriage and they'd have been in a family. They'd have been raising a family. As opposed to just being tossed to and fro, dealing with different men every six to four to six months. Being told that happiness is a career and then they get old enough where they realize they want children and they're too old to actually have them because of the diet and the, and the society we grow up in. All right. So I just want to highlight that through the spirit and kind of go into it. All right. Because, again, this is a teachable moment to highlight why the Lord told us. And why the Lord gave us a culture. Of balance. All right. Of wisdom of nation building. All right, so Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakodash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.